Walking Committee representative. First, I want to thank uh, many folks who have come out today to show their interest in this subject. Uh, it's one that certainly interests me, and, it's, and I am the beneficiary of uh, a lot of constituents who have uh, shared their interest with me regarding this subject. And sometimes it feels a little bit like a David versus Goliath because I don't have millions of dollars with which to help promote my side. Um, and I know that uh, the folks who are in support of this have had a great head start and certainly have lots of uh, financial wherewithal with which to promote their side. I'll proceed with my testimony. Chairman Stubbleton, Vice Chair Brenner, Ranking Member Fetter, and members of the House Education Committee, thank you for allowing me to provide a sponsor testimony on House Bill 237. It has been a bit of a long road getting here, and I want to thank Chairman Stubbleton for providing us the opportunity in this hearing and subsequent hearings to share our concerns about Common Core and to offer a remedy so that Ohio can have a well passed due conversation on how best to meet the needs of our children and our educators when it comes to public education. I'll testify today on my original bill, but it will also supply copies of my proposed sub-bill, which contains what I believe are much needed changes and better protections for our students and their families. I was first brought into the loop on Common Core by a constituent of mine from Noble County. She's a longtime teacher and she expressed her deep and troubling concerns about Common Core. I promised I would look into her concerns and what I learned troubled me deeply as well. Despite what its proponents claim, the formulation and propagation of Common Core standards was not a state-led initiative but rather was the creation of external special interests in Washington and was funded in large part by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. In fact, Chester Finn, president of the Thomas B. Fordham Institute, in his August testimony before the Michigan House Committee stated, as you know, the Gates Foundation paid for the development of the Common Core Standards. There's no dispute in that. The groups involved in pushing the mandate, such as the National Governors Association and Council of Chief State School Officers, have no constitutional authority over what policies are enacted here in Ohio. Actually, governors don't legislate, that's the role of the legislature, and that's, I think that's an important distinction. We have no constitutional authority over policies are enacted here, but we're enlisted to provide political cover for those advocating the Common Core, who realize that presenting something as an idea from Washington would attract justifiable suspicion. It's important to note that none of the lead writers who helped craft the New English Language Standards had any experience teaching English in K-12 or college. The only mathematician on the validation committee for the math standards resigned declaring that these standards represented a dumbed down of math and were a disservice to students and parents. In fact, five of the 29 members of the validation committee refused to approve the standards, the overall standards. Nevertheless, in a three month period in the spring of 2010, 45 states, including Ohio, signed on to Common Core, uh, taking race to the top money in a process driven by the U.S. Department of Education. We only to compete for the funds, let alone obtain them. The states had to agree to adopt a set of standards common to several states. The only viable option available at that time was Common Core. The final draft of the standards was not available until June 2, 2010, well after most states had decided to opt in. Ohio was chosen to receive race to the top funds during the second round of applications. Ohio's application was due one day before the final standards were released. Many other states agreed to adopt the standards before even having draft standards to review. In a difficult economic climate, this ready cash, cleverly married with federal waivers from No Child Left Behind, induced states to take the bait. Along with the cash came requirements regarding the institution of a statewide longitudinal database, mandatory assessments that would be composed under the directions of the federal government in line with Common Core, as well as teacher improvement and evaluation requirements. Many states have sub subsequently realized the high cost associated with Common Core and its implementation and testing requirements. About a week ago, Florida Governor Rick Scott removed Florida as, a, as the financial agent of the testing consortium, and that would be PARC, which is associated with Common Core. In late July, Georgia and Oklahoma decided not to adopt uh, the standards because of the per student cost of administering the achievement test with double. Indiana and Michigan have also recently voiced concern with Indiana suspending implementation in Michigan, cutting the funding necessarily necessary to enact Common Core. Altogether, there are at least 12 states that have legislation pending that would either halt the implementation of Common Core or repeal it entirely. Proponents of Common Core say that the states and school boards still have the flexibility in determining the curriculum. This, however, is questionable because standards drive curriculum and the assessment test will measure how well the standards have been absorbed. That leaves little to no latitude for developing a curriculum that is not Common Core compliant. Um, and I've also heard from homeschoolers who say, um, um, 
now that uh, David Coleman, who was the co-author uh, of the uh, Common Core Standards, is now the head of the college boards, he, will, he has uh, insisted that he will be aligning the uh, college board exams to Common Core. And uh, that is going to make it a little difficult for students who have not studied the Common Core grade one to be able to pass those tests and to be admitted to the university. So that's a concern that homeschool parents have raised with me.